Charlie says, what brand sandpaper do you use? Uh, most of the time I use Kovacs um, actually because they just sent me some boxes of it a couple months ago and I just still have a whole bunch. Uh, but Norton is a good brand. Kovacs is a good brand. Um, I mean, I sometimes I use some of the China stuff for 80 grit, you know, for the coarse grits. Um, but I say if you're going to be doing final work, like wet sanding and final work, buffing, you know, anywhere from 400 grit to 2,500 to 3,000 grit, you want to use a good brand, you know, because some sandpapers, um, they're just not made very well. And, you know, the, the base, the granulars basically just come off pretty easily and they don't sand evenly. And it's just, you know, so yeah, make sure you're using a good sandpaper. Metal or black would be good either way. What about some accent color on the wheels, like the purple somehow in it? Yeah, I was thinking of that, but to do, and I was actually thinking of doing a fade, a candy fade, kind of like how I had my um, my motorcycle, like a candy fade with the rims, but I don't have a device or a mount where I can put the rim and spin it. Because if you can spin the rim while doing your fade, it's the best because you get it nice and even. You know, to do it manually, walking around the rim is going to be very, very difficult. So I don't think I'm going to go crazy with that. It's just going to be a single tone rim, black or um, gunmetal. A lot of guys are saying gloss black. I'm pretty outside color, rim one color, and spokes another two-tone. Yeah, so that's, you know, it's possible. It's just going to take a lot of work, you know, because you're going to have to be masking and whatnot. So I don't know. I might just stick with a simple um you know simple single color on on the rims but here's what i'm thinking that i never told you yet so when when we start doing the candy fade and i'm going to be fading the candy up over here and ending it so we're going to have this is going to be gloss black this section here is going to be candy okay this this and it's going to like kind of fade fade to the gunmetal and disappear and then we're going to pick the candy up back down here toward the side. So that's how I'm kind of going to design it. And whatever color candy this ends up being, we're going to do our calipers that color candy. And then I'm going to get some Bremo decals and just put Bremo on it. Because these brakes are huge. They actually look like Bremo. So we're going to kind of just like candy it up, whatever color our candy is. So that'll give it some contrast already with our black, our gloss black rim or our gunmetal rim. I think the black will look better. We're going to go with black rims because this is going to be black. We're going to have gloss black trim with the gloss black rims. I think will look hot, you know, and then we'll candy out this caliper to um, whatever color this ends up becoming, you know, and then um, this front grill, I never really, I never really kind of like told you how this is going to work yet, but let's show you. So, you see this this line here across the whole front okay and then in here this line here i am going to two-tone this is going to all be black this is going to be gloss black and then it's going to kind of like wrap around in here and end so this part's going to be gloss black this white piece down here and all this is going to be that purple candy and then it's gonna, and this will, this is gonna be gloss black as well. So the front's gonna kind of have that cool gunmetal black, purple, and black. It's really gonna pop out, and then the candy is basically gonna fade out right here, right up, up, up in here. It's, um, I'll try to see if what I can do to, to really make it look hot. Um, and then we'll pick it up along the side and go around the back. And then the candy, we're gonna also gonna do the mirrors, the same candy um, as the bottom and and the rest of the candy. So we will get, you know, some contrast between the black rim, the candy and the caliper, the gun metal up here with the candy purple um, mirrors and the rest of the bottom. I think it's going to look really good. What do you guys think? Let me know after the Tesla. Yeah. So we'll probably do a chameleon, but not on this car. 
I mean, chameleon's kind of like played out, I think. It's just old and I don't know. But we'll do, maybe we'll do something smaller chameleon. You know, we'll figure it out. Uh, which Meguiar's compound and polish do you use on single stage paint? I'm using 2000 grit wet sand, but having difficulty getting a mirror shine. I have tried pro speed compound followed by ultra pro finish polish. Um, what type of pad are you using? So the pads make a really big difference as well. I think you're sanding down with 2000 grit. That's okay. Um, but you should be using the yellow wool pad um, at the compound stage yellow wool pad and try to get it as glossy as you can okay um and if it feels like it's not bringing out the shine put more compound on it and keep on buffing it until you get um that gloss look do i have my compound here or is it in the container i don't see my mcguire's compound out here at the moment or it might all, might be all the way up there anyway i'm not going to grab it i got too much crap in the way at the moment but um, make sure you're using a yellow wool pad for the compound stage. And you could move to a black foam pad um, with a swirl mark remover. And I do use the 3M Perfect It. Um, there's a lot of other co new compounds that I haven't tried yet. I've been hearing good results from uh, one of our VIP members, Arnold. Um, he has a motorcycle paint shop that he opened up. And um, I think he tried this other new compound it's basically a one-step compound but i mean i don't mind with a two-step you know you do your wool pad you get it nice and glossy and then um and then you basically get your uh your foam pad out and just be careful with foam pad you're going to want to reduce your rpms to pretty much a low setting because if that thing grabs on a corner or if you have it in one spot too long foam pads can burn paint very very quickly you just gonna have to be careful with the foam pad. Um, Velcro or sticky sandpaper, which is better or used most? I mean, sticky is fine. Um, I think Velcro. I'm I'm I lean toward Velcro a lot more nowadays. I used to have a lot of sticky, but you got to make sure your you know your pad is clean and all that. And sticky also Velcro is also good if you're using a little wet sand. So sometimes, you know, you're going to want to wet sand with a DA, right? You can just wet sand it no problem without any issues because it's Velcro. So nowadays, I use a lot of Velcro. You know, all of my papers, my DAs, all my pads are all Velcro. And there's a little 120 grit that we were using to scuff um, before we set our trunk lip spoiler on the back of that Tesla that we're going to be molding in with... Um, Epoxy. Um, what do I think about Meguiar stage one compound? Um, actually, I haven't tried it. You may want to just kind of like um, YouTube some reviews on it. I haven't tried it, to be honest. Yes, using a yellow wool pad. Okay, so you're basically if you're not able to get a shine when buffing, you're just not you're not using enough compound or you're not staying in one section long enough because with regular compound, you're supposed to get a pretty shiny finish, you know, and then you do the swirl mark remover, uh, which takes it to another level, right? So um, I would just say, keep cranking on it. Hold on, door jams first or after body. So you're gonna see exactly how we're doing this. I'm gonna do the door jams first, okay? Right? So um, I'm gonna finish taking off all the door panels, the trunk interior plastics, getting all that um, off, then we're going to thoroughly clean it. We're going to clean the door jams. Um, we're going to clean the whole car before we start doing uh, glaze putty, sanding, and body filler, yada, yada, yada. Okay. We don't have a lot of body work. Basically, a couple of rock scratches, a couple of paint scratches. Um, one, one ding is all I see in the car. You know, dime-sized ding. And um, raw plastic prep for paint. And um, it's going to look really good. I love the way this front lip looks. That diffuser there, it looks really, really good. So this, this Tesla is going to look hot when it's done, guys. You're going to see how we do it. Um, Paradise Garage, Learn Auto Body Style. I'm going to do it in this garage, believe it or not. And it's going to come out amazing. I have no doubt. And you guys, I'm going to reveal every step of the way. 
everything documented. You guys are gonna get it all and you're gonna see how we do this from the little home garage here. Does the flow coat give a paint job deeper depth? Yeah, it does. I would say it does, especially if you're flow coating over metallics, pearls, candies, then yeah, you'll get a deeper, a deeper look for sure. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I'll be back next week, same time. Like the video, subscribe, share. Check out the links down below here or up on the corner here. And um, I'll see you next week, guys. Peace out. Thanks for tuning in. I'll answer Jesse's last question here. How long should I wait to clear coat after airbrushing graphics with custom paint? Um, well, after you're done with your graphics, you want to make sure that's dry. So however long that takes to dry, you know, 30, 40, 50 minutes. I mean, you have a few hours to clear coat it. So I, I wouldn't wait too long, but you can wait up to a day, you know, up to up to a day. Okay. Anything more than that, then you're going to want to kind of sand your base coat and kind of rebase a little, little bit. Of, you know what I mean? But as long as you get it done within 24 hours, you'd be fine. Okay. So make sure your paint's dry and then just tack it down, clear coat it. You're good. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you guys next week. Peace.